There we go. Good morning, Facebook. Uh, we're glad you're here with us uh, this morning. We're in First Peter chapter four, and these that are at church, uh, this is a wonderful chapter, and I think we'll be have a blessing from it. So, uh, what page is it on in our pew Bibles, uh, church? Nine seventy-seven. Nine seventy-seven says. Uh, Let's just have a word of prayer. First Peter 4, Lord, bless our hearts. Save that soul nearest hell this morning here in church and out there on Facebook. And Lord, being saved is the most important thing in the world. Help us now to know Thee and, and the power of the resurrection. Help us. Give us truth. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh... Arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that hath suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ always had been, because uh, he's God. And, of course, in eternity past, he was there with the Father, seated at the right hand of the Father. And uh, with God, you know, there's no beginning or no end of God. You and I had a beginning, but there's no end with us. I talked about flying away here uh, and going to heaven. And if uh, uh, the, the the psalmist says that uh, that the Lord is pleased with the death of his saints, and when we as Christians die, we go to heaven. If you're not saved, you go to hell. So you're either going to heaven or hell. But Jesus, it says... Uh, for as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh. Now, man, be, the, the Bible says God became flesh and dwelt amongst us. The Lord Jesus Christ uh, is God incarnate. It means that, that the incarnation of Christ, he came down on this earth and he was born of a virgin. We're, we're going to celebrate that now, aren't we? Come the 25th of December. Was Jesus born on the 25th of December? Probably not. When was he born? I'm not exactly sure. When do you think he might have been born? Maybe in April. I'm not sure. But it doesn't matter. He was born. Amen. And it was Emmanuel, God with us. Unto us a son is given. Unto us a child is born. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And he shall be called Wonderful Counselor. The Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father, Isaiah 9, 6, it tells about prophetically about Jesus Christ. So uh, he suffered for us in the flesh. He came down here and he, was, he, he had a, a shameful death, didn't he? Did Jesus Christ, uh, 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 he was punished for sin, wasn't he? Who sinned? Was, was he punished for his sin? No. For our sins. Yeah. Uh, our, uh, your sins and your iniquities will God remember no more if you come through the blood of Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with a religion. There's not a religion that will save you. This is a Baptist church. The Baptist religion won't save you. The Methodist religion won't save you. The Catholic religion won't save you. The Episcopalian religion won't save you. The Muslim religion won't save you. The Hindu religion won't save you. There's not a religion on the face of this. There's only Jesus will save. You understand? It has to be a personal born-again experience like I texted out today from this First Peter chapter 4. Verse 2, That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. So we're, we're, we're supposed to, I'm a born-again Christian. I hope you are. If you're a born-again Christian, you're going to suffer persecution because the Bible says this, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. I'll take it as a badge of honor. I'm criticized regularly from worldly people and religionists and so on and so forth because of my a firm stand for Jesus Christ as the only Savior. And I'm going to stand for him. I'm not going to. I'm not going to dip my sails at all. I'm standing for Christ. Verse three: For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we locked in. What's the will of the Gentiles? That's 
That's uh, worldliness. That's the way of the world. We either have... Uh, it, it, it talks about Jews and Gentiles. Now, I'm a Jew, but I'm not a Jew. How on earth can you be a Jew and not a Jew? I'm a spiritual Jew. You see, saved people, everybody that's saved here, you're a spiritual Jew. There are, there are a lot of Jews. In fact, most Jews uh, that are have bloodline of, of Judy. And do, do we have any uh, uh, actual Jewish? Uh, you got any? Jew, how many of you got are Jews here that have the Jewish blood running in your veins? Anybody here at all? Do you? Oh, Amen. Well, that's that's wonderful, Sandy. And on uh, which which side? On my mother's. On your mother's side. Well, so you actually have some Jewish blood in your veins. Oh, well, that's wonderful. But you see, uh, the, 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 the important thing isn't uh, the heritage Jewish blood in you. The important thing for you, Sandy, is the blood of Jesus Christ that paid for your sins, and then you're born again. I gave her someone, uh, my, 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 my grandson said, we were, we were given testimonies uh, on Thanksgiving Day, and Sandy gave her testimony. And, and she just gave a short and sweet, wonderful testimony about when she was saved. I thought, that's wonderful. You know, you know most people in the, in the world, Sandy, they don't have a testimony like that. They ain't saved. There's so many, they, they think they're good works, or they think because they they're been uh, joined a certain church or been confirmed. Where's uh, David's here today? David was a, a confirmed Lutheran. Is that correct, David? And then uh, several weeks back, a few a couple of weeks back, David said, "You know, Pastor, I'm telling you about my Lutheran uh, confirmation, and all that." He said, "I've been listening to you preach here for a while." And correct me if I'm wrong, David. And I'm thinking he told me that on almost Sunday morning, several weeks back here. He says, "But you know, as I've been listening to you preaching, I found it's not the confirmation, whether it be Lutheran or whatever kind of confirmation, it's Jesus Christ that died for me." And paid for my sins. You see, the only the only thing, the only way can, it's not it had nothing to do with being a Lutheran or a Catholic or a Baptist or a Presbyterian or a Mormon or a or a Muslim or anything. Religion, religion will take you to hell. Jesus will take you to heaven. Amen. Amen. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles or worldliness. When we walked in lasciviousness, that ain't good. Lust. That's bad lasciviousness. That's nastiness and immorality. and That's not good. Lasciviousness is a big word, but it's not a good thing. Lasciviousness. Lust. Excess of wine. Uh oh. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging, and whosoever is received thereby is not wise. Uh, 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 how many. Uh, nah, I used to get drunk. I've not been drunk in uh, ever since I've been saved. Forty-eight years and eight months, I've never been drunk. I used to get drunk before. I was never what you call a uh, an alcoholic or someone that couldn't stay away from. When I get drunk, I'd get drunk, but I could take it or leave it. But I used to get drunk. <clears throat> but I have been drunk uh, in uh, forty-eight years, eight months. How many of you in here been drunk in the last month? Okay. Got one, two, three honest people. Got three honest ones and probably ten that aren't honest. <laughs> My last drink was New Year's. Was it? Yeah. Alcoholic beverage? Yeah. What what do you do? You have an alcoholic beverage once a year at New Year's or what? No, I always just drink too much as an I ain't doing. Oh, good. Good for you, Gary. So we got David and Ken and Joe owned up to being drunk in the last month. That's it. The Bible says, confess your sins one to another. Amen? Anybody else want to get honest about it, been drunk in the last month? Bob says, confess your sins one to another. <laughs> My friends, uh, David and uh, 
How come I call, how come I always call you Clifford? Why don't you tell me your name isn't Clifford? Ken? Uh, I, I never you didn't? Oh. Huh? <laughs> David and David and Ken were drunk on Thanksgiving Day. Was that is that correct? Oh, you don't remember. Me too. As drunk as a stump, huh? Me too. Were you drunk on Thanksgiving Day? Yeah, had oh. a few beers. Yeah. Well, I mean, they had more than a few beers. I mean, they was out of it. <laughs> David really played the fool, didn't he? He, he was. I had that. I had that international basketball team here from Europe, and and. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm glad you're not. Huh? <laughs> anyway all right walk in last tribute lust excess of wine or beer or whiskey or vodka or gin or white lightning worst drug problem we have in America is the legal drug of alcohol that's the worst drug problem we have cause more trouble revelings banquetings and abominable idolatries. That's statues of Mary and Joseph and Jesus. That's abominable idolatries. My Catholic friends. Wherein they think it's strange that we run not with them. I don't run with them kind of people. I don't run with drunkards. I don't run with dopers. I don't run with idol worshipers. Wherein they think it's strange that we run not with them in the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. By the way, wicked people speak evil of God's people. Every day, we're railed against, we're hated. Verse 5, Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? Verse 6, For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead. Someone says, Oh, this isn't easy. This is an easy verse. Don't try to make it difficult. He says, I thought once you I thought once you're dead, you either go to heaven or hell. Yes you do, you go to heaven or hell. So you don't uh, this isn't talking about dead people as far as their heart has stopped beating and they're no longer a mortal, they're no longer a human being. It's not talking about those kind of dead. This is talking about people that are dead in trespasses and sins. That's like you that are sitting here that never been born again. That's the kind of dead it's talking about. Because the Bible says this, it never contradicts itself. The Bible says it's appointed on the man once to die and then the judgment. So this isn't talking about preaching to dead people that have expired and are in the graveyard. It's not talking about preaching to them. It's talking to preaching to dead people that are dead in trespasses and sins, just so you understand that. Because the Bible makes sense and it never contradicts itself. And if the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment, once you die you're going to heaven or hell. Ain't no other choice. Like one, folk, one guy brought me a book. Uh, it was called the Book of the Dead. It put out by the Catholic Church, and he showed me his name in the Book of the Dead. And what it is, the Catholic Book of the Dead. Here's what it is: If you pay a, a certain amount of money, say you pay a hundred dollars, I don't know how much you have. You might have paid more than that. Probably get your name in there to have it printed in the book. It might be a thousand, maybe five. I don't know. The guy that had his name in there, he, he he had money. And what you do if you get your name in the book of the dead, the more you pay, the more the Catholic Church prays. Here's the deal with Roman Catholicism. High money, high mass. Low money, low mass. No money, no mass. There you go. So, you might get in the book, of, just like that guy showed it to me. I says, you're a fool. You wasted your money on that. Well, I just want to make sure. 
I tell you what, I'm sure I'm going to heaven. It ain't got nothing to do with the book of the dead. Let's go on. Verse 6. For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, lost people, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. Verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober and watch unto prayer. I mean talking about being sober, uh, not getting doped up with alcohol or other drugs. And above all things, have fervent charity or love among yourselves. We're supposed to love one another. God is love. What we ought to have as Christians, we ought to have love one for another. I hate to see Christians fight. Christian, uh, great church. The best independent Baptist church uh, that was in uh, Central Florida out in uh, uh, Orange City, Volusia County Baptist Church had a big split here lately. Pastor was there for 20 years, built a great church, retired, and the church going every kind of direction now because, because the devil wants Christians to fight with one another. The devil is for church splits. God is for love and unity, but they fighting with each other and going this way and going that way. God help us as Christians to, to honor other Christians and love one another. Amen? Amen? Fight the devil. Don't fight each other, Christians. God help us. It's God's people fighting one another. Shame on us. Verse 9, use hospitality one to another without grudging. Be hospitable. Be kind. Love suffereth long and is kind. Love vaunteth not itself. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Huh? Beareth all things. Hopeth all things. Believeth all things. That's what love is all about. Amen? If we don't love one another as Christians, we're nothing. We can feed the poor. We can give our bodies to be burned. We can do anything. But without love, we're a zero. I don't want to be a zero. I want to count. And if I'm going to count, I'm going to love other Christians. I'm going to love a lost and dying world and try to tell them about Jesus so they can be saved. Verse 10. As every man hath received a gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Verse 11, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Close of a thought here when it says amen. Let's go to verse 12. Beloved, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial uh, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. You see, Christians will be tried. Christians will be persecuted. Christians will have a tough way to go. Jesus was despised of man. You know, he was a man of sorrows. If they hated Jesus and persecuted him, why do you think you or I should have any better treatment than Jesus? If they hated the Master, they'll hate us. Amen? If they persecuted the Master, uh, don't think it. Some of you and people talk about just, oh, I got this and this one persecuted that. Just, it's, it's, it's part of the territory. Amen? It's part of being a Christian. When we get to heaven, ain't going to be no more of that. Ain't going to be no more wicked sinners. Ain't going to be no more tax. No more sin. No more sickness. The former things will be passed away, amen. These old sore knees will be gone, amen. Praise God. Verse 13, but rejoice in so much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings. Do you, re do you rejoice in suffering? I know you don't. Joe shook his head, no. It, but, but what did it tell you to do here, Joe? What did it say? says, but rejoice in so much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings. So we have, uh, we have no reason not to rejoice in sufferings. 
because the Bible tells us to rejoice in sufferings. We like to rejoice because we got money in our pocket. We got health. Everything's okay. It's sun shining out. It's not rain. And then we want, no, don't be a fair weather Christian. Rejoice. Praise God. Rejoice in sufferings. That's what the Bible's telling us here. Rejoice in your sufferings. That when his glory shall be revealed, that's heaven. He may be glad also with exceeding joy. So the sufferings of this life, listen now, the sufferings of this life have nothing to do, uh, uh, it's going to be nothing at all compared to the glory that we're going to have in heaven. Amen? Amen. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Praise God. Verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. Of course, a Christian should be a murderer. Or as a thief, Christians. People steal from the church, you know. I've had helpers. I've had helpers that have been here at the church uh, that have, have stole from the church. I had one. I had one helper that was here. I, I, I trusted him, and and, uh, and 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 he went out. And and you you know Doris, my dear servant Doris. Uh, he went out to the to her car to get some uh, potato chips or something out of the, something that was for the mission. Come in here, and. Uh, Stole stuff out of her trunk. He said, "How do you know? I caught him. I, I, I caught him with the stuff." Yeah, that, can you even imagine that? Stealing out of Doris's trunk, ninety-five-year-old dear sweet Christian that volunteers for the mission, and the dirty crook lied to me. And then, by the way, I caught him stealing. He was such a he was such a thief he wouldn't even admit it. I had the stuff right in my hand. It was in his bag fifteen minutes before it was in her trunk. He's such a dirty, rotten, lying thief, they wouldn't even admit it. Huh? That's a nasty good for nothing skunk, wouldn't you say? I would. You say, well, I wouldn't call anybody a skunk. Well, I just did. If you don't like it, lump it. He was a skunk. And he wasn't going to steal from a 95-year-old, dear, sweet Christian woman that trusts everybody. He's a skunk and a rat. Then when he walked out the door, he says, I'm surprised you'd think I, that I'd do that. I was surprised he did it too, but I caught him red-handed. <laughs> I mean, it was such a... God help his wicked soul. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody. Oh, what? That'll get you, Christian friend. You say, I'm not a murderer. I'm glad you're not. I'm not a thief. I'm glad you're not. But how about being a busybody? Running your big mouth. Some of you, you hear some trash on someone. You can't, you can't wait to tell it to someone else. Keep your mouth shut. Remember what Grandma said? Grandma told me, uh, grandson, if you don't have nothing good to say about anybody, don't say anything at all. Did anybody your grandma told you that? <laughs> My grandma told me that. <laughs> yeah. Why do we like to tell trash on someone else? Makes you feel good about yourself. It you do. That's why you do it, Joe? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, and Diane shakes it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> That's why we do it. All of us. It ain't just Joe. It's you and I. It's all of us. We do what? Uh, uh, we're busybodies and we talk bad about someone. Why? Because we're mad at them and we want someone else to be mad at them. We want to talk them down. That's the only reason you talk bad about anybody. Am I right or not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're mad and, 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 and you want to you wanna knock your feet out from under them so you're going to be a busybody. Yeah. Getting nervous, squirming in your seat a little bit. How about you out there on Facebook, huh? <laughs> I'm not going to let you get out of it either. Yeah. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, I've known what it is to suffer as a Christian. I've known it recently. But if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. But let him glorify God on this behalf. So praise God. You want to rail on me for being a Christian? 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to heaven one day. This world's not my home. I'm going to go to heaven one day. I'm born again. Yeah. For the time has come. Listen now. Listen, Christian friend. Listen, Christian friend. Look verse 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. That saved people. You don't think God's people will be judged? We will. You and I will be judged. You know where we're going to be judged? At the Bema Seat of Christ. The Bema Seat, the Judgment Seat of Christ, that's for believers. It's not. The Judgment Seat of Christ isn't whether you're going to go to heaven or hell or not. The, the Judgment Seat of Christ is going to be what your rewards will be in heaven. Once you're saved, you're always saved. Your judgment was taken care of at the cross when Christ shed His blood and He rose from the grave. The gospel has saved you. But you will be judged for your works. And your works will either be gold, silver, or precious stone, and those will be rewards in heaven, or there'll, be, or there'll be wood, hay, and stubble, which will burn up. Won't send you to hell, but those works will be better. Sad to say, you and I as Christians, too much of our works are wood, hay, and stubble. We need more gold, silver, and precious stones. Amen? Amen. Judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, the Christians, it first agree at the judgment seat with us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God be? The fires of hell. You that are here sitting in church today, if you're not saved, you better get saved. You be burning one day and another day and 10 years from now, and 50 years from now, and 100 years from now, and 1,000 years from now, and a million years from now, and a billion years from now, and a trillion years from now, you'll be burning and weeping and wailing and you'll say, why didn't I listen to Pastor Varga? I heard him preach. I heard him on the 28th day of November 2017. And I had a chance to be saved. Why didn't I listen? Here I am now in hell. Weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. I'll never have any rest I'll be tortured and, and tormented forever and ever and ever, time without end. You that are in church here today, you keep rejecting Christ, that's what will happen to you. You out there on Facebook too. Maybe some of you Facebook people, forward this to someone. Forward it to all your friends on Facebook. Folks going to hell. You better get saved out there on Facebook if you're not or send this to someone that needs to be saved. For if the righteous scarcely be saved, you and I that are saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? In hell fire forever and ever. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to Him in well-doing as unto a faithful Creator. That's we that are saved. Just commit yourself to Christ. If people persecute us, you might even be... We could be martyred. There are people that will be killed for the cause of Christ today around the world. You, you go on the martyrs website, and it'll show you where people are being killed today. And by the way, that, that lion a Muslim, Iman, from out there in Sanford, where they just made this new mosque, millions and millions of dollars, he invited all the other religions in there. They closed the article and said, because we all serve the same God. He's a dirty liar come right out of hell. You know what the Quran teaches? You know what the Muslims teach? Death to America. Death to the Jews. Death to the Christians. You look on the internet and say, Allah Akbar, as they cut the throats of Christians. And he's going to lie. In the, in, and by the way, um, the, this fake news that they have, the news journal, they had it in there Sunday in the news journal. You can look it up. 
And they, they, they said all these nice things about these murderous, terrorist Muslims. You say, oh, it's just a few of them. You got a hole in your head. You Google, Google it on your, on your smartphone. Google it and look at what the Muslims did all around the world on 9-11. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Remember that? All over the world, millions of, of Muslims were dancing in the street. You, you look it up. Look it up on your smartphone. They try to tell you that, that the Muslim religion is just a few people. Oh no. Oh no. It's, it's, it's what's called uh, jihad. It's practicing the Quran. Yeah. They practice Sharia law, which is death to the infidel, which is you and I, anybody that's not a Muslim. Don't you believe that phony baloney junk? See, they come in being nice. They build a big. I'll I, I bet you all that. I bet you all that money built that millions and millions of dollars. Bet that mosque in in uh, uh, Sanford. I bet you it came from Iran. See, there's two different kind of uh, Muslims. You got the Shiite and the, and the Sunni. There's more Sunnis than there are Shiite. Shiite is what Iran is. That's all Shiite there. And uh, that's a Shiite mosque in, in Sanford. I bet you them millions of dollars came from Iran. You can trace them back to Iran. I'm sure you can. But watch out. Last verse. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to Him in well-doing as unto a faithful Creator. Who's the Creator? It's not Allah. Is Jesus Christ, Amen. Jesus Christ is the Creator of heaven and earth. John one one. We talked about it the other day. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were created that were created by Him, Jesus Christ. Glory to God. We're done. We're done. Let's have a word of prayer, Heavenly Father. We thank you for these that are here. People in this congregation this morning need to be saved. There's people out there on Facebook need to be saved. If you're not sure you're saved, you know if you're saved or not. If you're really born again. If you have any doubt in your mind and you're willing to turn from your sins and know you can't save yourself, believe that Jesus shed his blood on the cross. And if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It ain't a matter of religion, it's a matter of a Savior, Jesus Christ. Would you call upon him right now? I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer. I prayed it April 4th, 1969. Others have prayed it that are here in church. Others have prayed it out there on Facebook. But if you've never prayed it in your heart and been saved, pray this prayer with me now. This is the prayer. Pray it in your heart and be saved. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross rose in the grave the third day the best I know how with an honest heart I turn from my sins receive you as my savior thank you for saving me right now our heads are bowed our eyes are closed in church here this morning you say, Pastor, our heads are bowed, eyes are closed. No looking around, just Pastor. I wasn't sure I was saved, but I prayed that prayer and I asked Jesus to save me today in a minute. Would you slip your hand up? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Lord, thank you for that. How about out there on Facebook? Any of you trusted Christ today? I hope you have. Oh, I hope you have. If you haven't, please do it soon. If you have, let me know. Facebook friends, shoot this to someone else you know that needs to be saved. We're going to turn off Facebook now. We'll, we'll talk to you tomorrow morning. God bless each one of you.